Welcome to the podcast. My name is Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com. Today, I'm so excited. We're talking about a very controversial subject, something that's very, very important, which is biological dentistry and biomimetics root canals. And we answer all of your questions today about uh, why root canals are bad for you, why they're not always bad for you, and alternatives to root canals how to prevent root canals in the first place, and how a lot of ways uh, in which conventional dentistry is harmful to our teeth and and will promote root canals in the future. And we also talk about the issues with mercury fillings and a lot of amazing information today about biological dentistry and dental alternatives. And I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how to detox your body. You guys know I love educating people about heavy metal detoxification. And I've worked with thousands of clients over the years, and I've developed a top 10 tips to detox like a pro checklist, which you can download totally for free at detoxforenergy.com. And with this checklist, I've distilled down all the top tips that you can use at home to get started today, detoxing your body, using some very, very simple, inexpensive strategies, because I know a lot of you guys, not everyone can do my Myers Detox protocol and do testing and working with a practitioner. So I wanted to provide some ways for you guys to start detoxing on your own at home. So just go download that today. Our guest today is Dr. Paul O'Malley. In 1984, he graduated from the esteemed Creighton University School of Dentistry. Later, he completed a residency at Baylor University in Texas in cosmetic dentistry, and then spent six years practicing and learning in one of the premier cosmetic dentistry practices in the United States, located in Beverly Hills, California, and has logged well over a thousand hours in continuing education to follow through on his ongoing commitment to dental health. He pursued his studies with a number of the great technical dentists of our time, Dr. Dickerson, Dr. Kwa, Dr. Spear, Dr. Dawson, and became fully laser trained and can perform laser healing and cosmetic laser dental procedures. He's one of the handful of dentists worldwide that are masters of both biomimetic and holistic dentistry. And you can learn more about him at drpaulomalley.com. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about your background as a biological dentist. How did you get into that kind of dentistry? Well, actually back in uh, 1993, I remember a patient came into my office when I was in West Texas and the patient said, you know, I just had some root canals done and now I have some kidney trouble. Do you think they're related? And I said, you know, I'd never heard of such a thing, but I don't know. Let me research it. And so that actually started my journey. And then I started seeing different things. I talked to the uh, famous um, pioneer who's now passed away, but uh, Hal Huggins yes. in Colorado. And what a nice guy, gentleman and genuine guy. He really, he sent me his book and I started studying that. And within a couple of months, we stopped placing mercury fillings and we stopped uh, doing all these uh, kind of things that were, let's say, questionable at first in my mind. So in 1993, I was sort of like a maverick out in West Texas, like, okay, I told my associates we're not doing this anymore, you know. And of course, they were like, well, but patients will be upset and this and that. I said, well, okay, we won't make it about the mercury issue or things like that. We'll just say, look, it's uh, we have prettier fillings than that we just don't do the black fillings anymore yeah and that's kind of how it started and then in the year 2000 I moved to California and I started working with a, a dentist in Northern California and he was very much into the holistic side of dentistry and so he introduced me to the uh, International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology the IAOMT and I went and took their courses and it was a perfect fit because Biologic slash holistic dentistry is really clean. It's really beautiful presentation, and you're paying attention to the person's body. You're not, we're no longer like a robot just uh, drilling and filling, let's say. And so that's kind of how I got involved in those things. 
Yes. So you mentioned root canals uh, with your story. So what are what is the problem with root canals? Are they harmful? Should people be getting them? And let's, we'll talk about some alternatives also. Sure. I mean, it's a, it's a loaded question because even through the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, we don't have enough scientific evidence to say they're all bad. You should remove your root canals. And but there's a lot of things on the internet that are kind of frightening and scary to people. So, you know, it's sort of like, what do you do? So I think you have to look as a practitioner, I have to look at the patient in front of me and see what their health history is and see, are they at risk? Is there something going on? Do they have some type of autoimmune problem going on? And let's try nutritional things first before we go and say, let's start taking teeth out because I've been practicing dentistry for a long time. And the problem with a uh, radical, somewhat of a radical approach might be, well, you start removing these root canal teeth, and then now people are missing their teeth, they can't eat and chew properly, and they're still sick, some of them. So it's more of a more, uh, let's say, cautious area. But here's the whole theory behind the thing, and you're probably well aware of this. And I actually, I made a little drawing here. I don't know if we can see it on the TV. I'm gonna back up a little bit. but. I just went over a little bit of the anatomy of a tooth, and of course on the outer surface you have the enamel, and the inner surface you have dentin, and then in the uh, center it's all there to protect this precious nerve. So if this is the nerve, it goes down in the center of the roots, it actually communicates with the nerve, it has the blood vessels, it has uh, artery, vein, lymphatic system, so there's pulsation in and out, and it actually keeps this hydrated. So the tooth has flexibility, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, it can withstand the pressure. It's like a football helmet. You got the hard outer shell, and you have the inner softer dentin, and um, and it's protecting this whole thing. Well, along the sides in the dentin, which by the way, the word dentin means in dent, which means inside the tooth. Just that's its derivation. So you have these little tubules or little microscopic straws, let's say, that fill the tooth in the dentin, and they communicate to the nerve all the way down through the root system. So the theory is that if you take this sick nerve out and seal down through here, these little tubules can then get backfilled with bacteria over time. They can mutate and kick out uh, toxic byproducts. There are uh, different acids, enzymes, and things like that, and it can go down along the side of the tooth, wall off into the bone, and then every time a person is chewing, it can pump and go into the bloodstream. And if they have a weak organ in their body, then it can attack that area. Mm. This is some of the theory behind it. It goes all the way back into the early 1900s uh, with a guy by the name of Weston Price. So, you know, I, I would refer your your audience and 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 all those that are involved in sort of their own research, they have to sort of look for themselves to see what kind of makes sense to them because we know that there are going to be toxins left behind with the root canal procedure. Um, a great professor from University of Oklahoma, Boyd Haley, has done the studies. Any tooth that had to be removed for whatever reason, they always tested and always found there were toxins down there. But even Boyd and I had the question, we said, but should that mean that every person that needs a root canal or has to get a root canal should have it out? So what are some of the alternatives to root canal? Is it possible that someone, say if you have an old root canal, someone can go in, a biological dentist can go in and do ozone and then repack it properly and maybe um, improve on the infection? Or uh, what are your alternatives? I mean, there's a couple of things. One is that a, a lot of times, if a root canal looks infected, it does need to get retreated because many times what happens, a patient gets a root canal done and then they don't go and get it sealed or covered or the filling done and things like that. And then bacteria goes back down in the tooth, reinfects it. In those cases, it has to be redone. Ideally, if it's being redone, it should be done with this inert a material as is possible. and and. Um, there's different materials that are out there. Typically what they use is gutta percha, which is sort of a rubbery plastic type of material. But you can find specialists that'll work with um, a substance called MTA. M is in Mary, T is in Thomas, and A is in Apple. 
and they can fill with that. The only negative is once you fill with it, it's a one shot deal. You can't go back in and retreat it if it fails later. Uh. So, so there's that alternative. And then there used to be a product called EndoCal and EndoCal was a sort of a calcium type product that would seal and theoretically would spread into and through the dentinal tubules. But there was some uh, problem with some of the, the spreading mechanism over time, fracturing teeth. So I don't even know if you can get it. Maybe you can make an order in Europe. But what I found, Wendy, is the vast majority of people are told they need a root canal. If there's not an infection and you can test it with ice and it responds normally with ice, they won't need a root canal even if the decay is really deep. Hmm. They just have to find a practitioner that practices super conservative dentistry or a type of dentistry that I do. It's called biomimetic dentistry, which is life copying dentistry so we can rebuild the tooth. And we can literally leave about a half a millimeter or a millimeter of decay behind because the tooth will remineralize it. Ah, uh, yeah. See, yeah, that that's interesting because I just had my daughter just had a, a bunch of dental work done at a biological dentist and they did the biomimetic uh, procedure yeah. and you know she just had a bunch of uh, you know potential root canals and things like that that a, right. a, a typical dentist wanted to do our aunt or Winter's aunt and so obviously I opted not to do that and took her to a biological dentist. Good. But, <laughs> Good. but that's what I mean. It's stories like that, you know because it's not that the dentists are bad people, that's what we've been taught. If it's near the nerve or the decay looks deep, look on the x-ray and go, oh, you're gonna need a root canal. And so they just do it, Yeah. you know? And they don't actually need to do that. The problem is that uh, the patients, they're not educated enough, so they just go, okay, fine, we'll do a root canal. Yes. And then maybe 10, 15 years later, they got five or six of them, and then they got some, you know, they've got now Crohn's disease or some autoimmune weirdness that doesn't run in their family and it was unique to them. And then that's when it becomes sort of like, you know, what came first, so. What is the correlation there? I've, uh, you know, read and, and heard things about how the higher the number of root canals that one has, the higher the incidence of cancer and autoimmune and other health issues. What's the connection? Well, you know, I don't know for sure. I'm still a student in this area because there are there are loose studies out there. I don't think there's any double blind studies that show that. We can show that if someone's had root canals and their body's reacting negatively, you can see on a blood test. The white blood cells look different. The the breakdown of the white blood cells, some are higher, some are lower, and you can tell there's something going on in the jawbone. But does it link them to cancer or not? I don't know. You know, I've had patients that would tell me that, that, hey, I read that every single patient that had cancer has had either root canals or infection in their jawbone. And, you know, I don't know if that's, I don't know where they're finding the study. I mean, do you, do you know where the studies come from? Or? No, I don't, no, no. There's, just, mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet, that things that you read and, you know, you wonder if it's backed up by studies. Yeah, and I mean, those are, that's some of the things that are loosely can be stated, you know, through the internet. I don't know any scientific studies that, that say that because if it did, it was validated, even the IOMT would have a blanket statement saying root canals should be and must be removed in this certain way. And that statement has not come out yet. Yeah, I'm sure it's hard to prove that the, the causation, but maybe there's some correlation there and you think just uh, you know, common sense wise, people someone has five root canals, and there's yeah. infections uh, in all of those root canals. The immune system is going to be you know occupied uh, yeah, fighting absolutely. those infections, and then the yeah. immune system could potentially have uh, performance issues or issues with dealing with other types of infections like cancer or right. autoimmune issues, and it can go haywire. That's right. I mean, and that's why prevention truly is the best, like you did with your daughter. Um, I had a patient in just some time ago, and she had been to five, uh, three other dentists, and they said, she, one said she needed five root canals, another one said she needed nine root canals. And I restored all their teeth, no root canals. It's been more than a year. They're all still uh, happy teeth. They're viable, and she's doing great. So the ability that we could eliminate that is amazing. And then we don't put someone in that gray area. To me, it's a big gray area. 
of do you want to treat that? Do you not want to treat it? You know, if someone has a root canal, they're going to need a root canal. So the best thing I can say for your audience is make sure that you're seeing a specialist. If you are being told you need a root canal, have it evaluated to make sure if it's still alive, it can be treated and restored. If it's completely dead and there's an infection, here's the things that can be done. You can have a traditional root canal. You can have a more holistic root canal with that MTA type filling, or now they're using a bioceramic type of material, which is um, uh, uh, less um, aggressive, let's say, than the gutta percha. And then you can also have the tooth removed properly where they take out the periodontal ligament and they take out a half a millimeter bone surrounding or any infection so that you're in a healthy bone. But again, you don't want to be too aggressive with that approach because then you start losing bone and it's harder to restore if that gets too aggressive. And the biologic dentists are good at that. They're, they're less and less aggressive, I believe, with removing too much bone these days, thankfully. And you said that root canals are done differently in the past than they are today. Can you explain that a little bit? And if people that have old root canals, if they're potentially packed with metals like mercury? Right. Well, a couple of things. In days, maybe more than even 25, 30 years ago, the way that they would disinfect the tooth has changed. The gums, or the endodontists go in there, and the way that they treat uh, is really, really exacting. And most all of them are trained to use microscope, which is beautiful because they can look all the way down in there, make sure there's no hidden cracks and fractures. So that's important because you don't want to leave a tooth in there that's going to, number one, fail, or number two, keep a low-grade infection, which for sure would compromise the immune system. So uh, now when it comes to mercury-type fillings and things like that, it's a whole different ball game because how do you remove it safely? There's a whole protocol for that. How do you keep myself and my staff safe? Because we're the ones exposed to it so much. And then how do I keep the patient safe? That's a whole protocol. And there's a lot of dentists out there that are trained in how to do that, thankfully. When I first started doing this in the year 2000 in Los Angeles, there was like about nine of us in all of LA. So you know, people were coming from all over, traveling, and, you know, you'd feel terrible for them. It's like, gosh, can't we find someone closer for you, you know? But now more and more people are starting to uh, awaken and demand that, and the dentists are getting the training. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, I'm happy that you're doing this, too. You've been, you're have been you one of the pioneers in, you know, Los Angeles. You've been doing this for, what, 25 years now? Where yeah. you've been doing biological dentistry and serving so many people and, I just yeah. love, love the work that you're doing, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show. Oh, thank um, you. And let's talk a little bit about biomimetic dentistry. It's something we haven't talked about yet on the show, and, and how does that relate to holistic dentistry? You touched on it a, a little bit ago, but let's go a little bit deeper. Sure. Well, holistic dentistry is sort of the big picture philosophy, right? So it's like whatever we do to a person's teeth, their mouth, et cetera, how do we do it in connection with the whole body? What materials are we using? Is it safe for them? What... Uh, procedure are we doing if we're removing something? Is it safe for their body? How do we keep things safe for them? So that's the bottom line. The next thing that we look at is if we're going to restore the teeth, how do we then restore those teeth in a way that can mimic mother nature? Now that's sort of the subset, let's say. So you have holistic dentistry, keep the body safe. And then now we have techniques. What kind of techniques do we want to use that can actually keep the tooth healthy and keep it safe? And that's where biomimetic dentistry comes in. Because you'll hear a lot of times now, dentists are starting to do minimally invasive or more conservative type of dentistry. But what does that actually mean? And so I actually made a little illustration. The, the same illustration that I had from before, I don't know, is it possible to see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So um, I like showing this and it's it's on my, my website too, I explain it and then Later on, I can tell your listeners any store, any of the uh, background uh, or any of the uh, emails that they can tune into, uh, websites rather, that they can tune into so that they know what's going on um, in further education. But again, you have, you have this whole structure here, and I illustrated a small cavity here inside of the tooth. So this person has sensitivity and they say, gosh, I, uh, I feel real sensitive here, what's going on? And the dentist takes an x-ray and he sees this cavity. Well, you got a cavity and it's near the nerve, but it's not into the nerve. And the patient says, gosh, but when I eat cold, it feels like it's in the nerve. 
And that's because it communicates through these tubules to the nerve. So the tubules are like a straw filled with water. Any of your audience out there who have ever filled a straw with water, you can push on one side and feel it on the other side. You know, it just communicates. So it's the same way with this. So the dentist then has to go and drill in here and they remove this big bit of decay. And the problem with it is they go in and they actually start destroying a lot of healthy tooth to get there. That's traditional dentistry. And so I illustrated it a little bit more on this other page and I'll show you the procedure. So the dentist will go in and they have to remove a big section of the tooth in order to get that decay. And now they're getting dangerously close to the nerve. And then they'll take a big filling and glob it in there, put the blue light on it. Anybody that's had white filling, you know what this is about. They put the blue light on it and it shrinks. And it shrinks away from the tooth right along here, which is the area you want sealed the most. So, you know, it's just like, whoa. And, but it looks beautiful, it looks white. And it looks like you've got this nice restoration. And the bottom line is that you have um, sort of a camouflaged hole, let's say. It looks like it's sealed, it's filled. But to a bacteria, this looks like the Grand Canyon. And sure enough, the studies show all of these leak every time. Now, I'm not saying that to panic your you know, audience out there because they're just ones that have to be watched. So you go in and you get your teeth cleaned every six months or a year. They should be checked and looked at just to make sure decay is not seeping in under there because it's not going to happen that everyone's going to get decay under these things, but they're all leaking. Hmm. So now let's go over to biomimetic. And again, bio means life, mimetic means copy. So we want to copy the structure of how we can rebuild this tooth. And the way we do it is we go in more conservatively, keep as much tooth structure as possible. And then what we do is we remove all the decay. We use actually a stain to make sure we're removing the decay. And let's say in this area here, let's say there was decay right here, very close to the nerve. So in this area, we might opt to leave some of that decay. And there's a technical way of doing this that we learn in biomimetic courses and things, but we can seal the rest. The body will heal this up with dent, uh, a type of dentin once again, which is fabulous. Um, rehabilitative ability that the body has. But in traditional dentistry, we'd have to chase that down and we would get into the nerve and the person needs a root canal. Now we don't have to do it because we've tested the tooth with something cold and they go, ah, yeah, I feel that. It's not bad. It's a normal response to the other teeth. So we know the nerve is still healthy. So then we go in, maybe we leave a little bit there and we begin to put our first lining in. We just put a seal down. It's very small. We put the blue light on it, harden it, and then we walk away for five minutes because it's been found through the scientific literature. It needs five minutes to be left alone to complete its curing time. Then we start going in with other layers, layer by layer, putting the light on, another layer, putting the light on. So it could be 10, 12 different layers, sort of like building a wall with small bricks versus one big block. And the beauty is then it's a material which is going to follow the flexation, expansion, contraction properties that dentin has. So these are certain types of white composites, and the ones I use are BPA-free. They're also holistic, and they fall within that proper range. So now you have that, that uh, buffering zone, that shock absorber zone built in. And then on the outer part, we make an impression in a lab makes a porcelain piece that fits over the outer portion, which would then mimic the hard outer shell. And then you end up with a multiple layered restoration. And that's uh, biomimetic is sealed all the way through. So if this ever broke anywhere, this seal is never gonna be exposed. That tooth will never be exposed again for the lifetime of the tooth. This one's exposed. It'll need to be redone in three to five years. And then it's gonna get bigger. Then it's gonna get bigger drilled out. Then it gets bigger. They'll probably need a root canal. And then they're gonna need the infamous crown. And the infamous crown grinds down 70 to 80% of the good enamel in order to fit a crown over a tooth. And it really inflames the nerve. 33% chance over 10 years they'll need a root canal if they've had a crown. So 
there's dentists out there now doing biomimetic. You can find them, and they'll push really hard from not doing crowns because a crown is like one big glob over the tooth, or a big filling is one big glob over the tooth, and that will become the way of the past. We'll see how fast it takes, but like anything else, it takes time to uh, change the paradigm that's in dentistry today. So, how else are crowns and caps harmful besides, you know, inflaming the nerve? Well, the biggest thing is the the minute you cut down a tooth like that, you you've destroyed the integrity of the tooth and its true strength. So. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a greater risk that the person's going to need a root canal uh, because of the procedure. And the problem is people live longer now. So if that crown needs to be replaced, and by the way, insurances will repay for a new crown every five years, each year you're traumatizing that tooth, or each five years or seven years or whatever, you're traumatizing that tooth. So as a result of that, it's just an ongoing never-ending cycle because the tooth is now compromised. Now, if a person lived, let's say uh, you put a crown on and they're 85 years old, and maybe they're only gonna live eight or nine years, it's not a problem. But people live a long time, so we should rebuild teeth rather than tear them down, and that's the whole mantra. And the truth is when dentists learn this technology, I mean, there's a, I have this, Just this is just one big seminar in this this booklet here, this is filled with 69 um, scientific articles in the published literature that backs up every single step that we do in biomimetic dentistry. So it's not my great idea or five other dentists got in a garage uh, smoking a cigar or, or listening to the rock and roll music and said, let's do this. It's going to be a cool thing. And it makes sense. You know, it was all based on the scientific literature. And then now the results that we're seeing. 15 to 18 years later uh, is even surpassing what we saw in the literature. Teeth staying bonded, teeth staying sealed, healthy, lasting. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. So when the dentists learn this and they see it's backed by the scientific literature, they get reinvigorated and excited because as dentists, we don't like cutting down teeth. We don't want to hurt our patients. You know, most dentists are very loving people, kind, caring people as a profession as a general statement, and uh, they want to do things as conservative as they can. But, you know, if you go to, um, uh, you know, someone that uh, their main tool and trade is uh, uh, a carpenter that's a rough finisher and uses a hammer, he's going to fix things with a hammer. So you go to a traditional dentist, they're going to do things traditionally. If the tooth has a little crack, they're going to put a crown over it. If a tooth is broken, they're going to put a crown over it. They don't know this whole process to rebuild. And so shows like yours kind of helps because the people get out there and say, hey, I heard about biomimetic and can you go learn about it? And, you know, and of course they can. And, you know, I, I'm on the board of the biomimetic um, organization, the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry. So I'm happy uh, anybody that wants to, they can have their dentist call me. I can direct them in the right way, the right website. And let's go. Let's because this should be the standard of care. Yes. You see. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about mercury fillings, the infamous mercury toxic yeah. metals in your mouth. So how can metals in your mouth uh, be harmful from a holistic standpoint? I mean, we know that mercury is one of the most toxic metals on the planet. Um, let's talk about your viewpoint on it. Well, um, because mercury is, uh, roughly speaking, the third probably most toxic naturally occurring element on the planet, um, and our bodies can can detoxify it somewhat. I mean, our bodies are pretty amazing, but it's it's an interesting thing. If you told um, if you took one filling from a person and told them the amount of mercury that's outgassing from this and coming out, because mercury is one of these interesting metals. It's vapor at room temperature and liquid at room temperature, and it kind of morphs between that and solid, and so it's always outgassing. So now you put it in someone's mouth it's gonna be more, the vapors just come off 24 seven. You brush, it comes off even worse. I mean, you can go on YouTube and see videos with a fluorescent background and see the amount that's coming off, right? So there's no debate, even finally the American Dental Association, which has a whole history of uh, mercury fillings, they love to call amalgams to uh, mask 
that it's, you know, you should call whatever the thing is by its predominant metal. And the predominant metal in a silver filling is mercury. So it should be called a mercury filling. But they knew that that wouldn't go so well over the last hundred years. So uh, this line was pushed to call it an amalgam because it's an amalgamation of other various metals. But the problem with mercury is the toxicity of the metal. It's a poison, as we all know. It's a neurotoxin. And it, because it outgasses and it's so close to the head, it can go up the olfactory, it can get into the brain, it gets in all the organs. The studies are plentiful, they're, they're out there, so it's not debatable. Where the American Dental Association may come in and they might, all they might say is, yes, but it doesn't cause disease. Okay, fine. Now let's do an analogy here. I have, let's say I have a patient coming into my office and I say, uh, let's say, Wendy, you're coming in. And I say, Wendy. I have this filling I'd like to do for you. It's it's really nice. It's very fast. And I can plug it in really fast and it won't cost you a lot. And oh, by the way, it has a little bit of arsenic in it. Is that okay with you? <laughs> yeah. And you would say, of course, no way. Is there something else we can use? Well, uh, you know, so the difference is, you know, the toxicity of arsenic is like here. You know, it's like way down. The toxicity of mercury is like in the ionosphere. It's so bad. And so... It's sad, and the way that it came along was early on, and as dentists, you know, just to uh, be protective of my brethren and sisters out there, we were sold a bill of goods from our teachers, who were sold from their teachers, uh, all the way from the mid-1800s, that know this stuff locks in there, and it's all safe, and it's all good. Now, the American Dental Association fought this until 2004. They said, no, no, it doesn't come out, it's fine, it's fine. Finally, in 2004, they said, okay already, it does come out, but it doesn't cause disease. Uh, they have this much studies to say that. We have studies going through the ceiling of its association and exacerbation of different illnesses. Um, There's thousands. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, right? And so, <laughs> and it's a, it's a bear to get it out of the body, as you know, because you're a master at uh, detox and everything. It just takes a lot of time yes. and. You can go fast with some people, they get really sick, you can get slow, et cetera. But the cool thing in my practice has been, you know, I've had people come in and they have an electrical interference from it. One guy's buzzing on the side of his head, we remove the mercury safely, and the next day I call him, how are you doing? He goes, hey doc, the buzzing's gone away. Yes. I'm like, wow, that's great. And then of course said, do you think that's from the mercury? I said, you know, could be, um, it, it, it probably is. You know, and then I've had others with the chronic fatigue. The interesting thing is if they're working with, um, you know, getting some type of detox or your protocol, if they're doing things that can help their body heal, it's a one-two punch because we take out the source safely and then they need to detoxify. When I had one guy, he couldn't lift a carton of milk. And after about four months, the red blood cells sort of turn over in that period of time. His chronic fatigue and weakness and all that uh, went away. The most traumatic one I had was a guy that had severe fibromyalgia. And he came in and he was burning, uh, just a wonderful man, a German guy. He came in, he'd been all over the world, Mayo Clinic, everything. He had burning sin, uh, syndrome from his neck to his feet. Just, I said on a scale of one to 10, how bad is it? He said an 11. Mm. I sleep 10 minutes at a time. I'm like, oh my gosh, right? So he was loaded with mercury. So uh, um, this is back 15 years ago, but we, I removed one side, honest to gosh, she came back. Uh, we put some of the porcelain in, like I earlier showed, we rebuilt the teeth and put porcelain over. And at that time he said, Hey doc, I'm only burning from the waist down. I said, wow. And again, you know, they don't know. And it's like, he was hopeful, but he said, do you think that's from the mercury? I said, eh, sounds like it could be. Let's get the other side done. So we did, and then he came back, and he was only burning in his, the tips of his toes. Wow. So, you know, now I say that's, it's anecdotal. I don't say anybody out there listening that, hey, this is the sure cure for everything. But as you know, getting metal and mercury out of the mouth is the way to go because it allows the body to heal. And then uh, the glutathione in our natural system goes back to its normal uh, antioxidant level and various other enzymes start working better, etc. Yeah, I mean, I've heard so many stories about that, about how people have pain syndromes, numbness, tingling, burning, after they detox, after yeah. they detox the metals, they're a lot better. 
Um, let's right. talk a little bit about uh, what is the most important aspect of dentistry in relation in relation to helping the body detox itself. Well, um, wow, good question. I mean, I think if a person can work with a healthcare professional like yourself, where they're getting their immune system built up, they're getting ready, if they have to remove uh, metals and mercury and do all these things safely, that's the way to go. That's the ideal scene. Um, but the way that I've always looked at it over the years, and this is through uh, various protocols that I've researched and studied and followed, Typically, you want to make sure there's no infection. So you, we try to handle the infection, but let's say someone comes in and they have gum disease, but they have mercury fillings. Well, we don't want to go in there and start cleaning their teeth because it disrupts all the mercury fillings. And part of the infection may be exacerbated again by the mercury. So in that case, all right, let's get the mercury out. Let's clean everything up. Mercury's out. Let's get the metals out. Now let's clean the gums up. Now let's clean if they need a tooth removed or things like that. Now let's remove a tooth because they're not going to have, if a tooth's removed, they're not going to have mercury going down into that socket, walling itself off in the jawbone and toxins and, a, you know, a terrible mix of uh, uh, gook down in the jawbone, right, which you call, we call cavitations. So um, it, those things can be eliminated. So. I think that you want to handle infection and heavy metals. Typically, you want to remove the heavy metals and then handle the infection. And at the same time, if the person's very sick, you have to go slow. You can't go fast because just the procedure being in the dental office is enough to make them sick for a few weeks, yeah. you know. What is your procedure when you're removing mercury fillings? Some people have a whole mouth of fillings. Do you go slowly where you just do one or two at a time or you do like half the mouth at a time? What is your protocol? I know everyone's probably different, but just generally, like for anyone that's listening, that's thinking about getting their fillings removed, what are the best steps? I mean, it depends on the patient. If they're very healthy, generally we can do a lot at the same time because the whole concept is get it out, yeah. you know. Um, if they're sickly, then you have to go slow. I mean, that's the just the simple aspect of it. So each person is a little bit individualized, but it has to be removed as safely as possible. So, you know, for example, I follow the SMART technology. It's S-M-A-R-T from the IOMT, and that's beautiful. And I add a few things on my own to make sure there's no leakage and uh, and the air is really super clean and all these things. And for the most part, nobody's going to react negatively unless they're overloaded with mercury. If they're overloaded, it's sort of like a garbage can, you know, if they're filled up with it, no matter what we do, they can't handle anymore. It just dumps into their body and they're, they're kind of sickly. Those are the ones that are a little bit bedridden in and out of bed. They do good. Then they're not so good. You know, those are brittle. So those usually I say, go see the healthcare person. Let's get yourself uh, healthy. Let's get some detox protocols. You know, and unfortunately, sometimes they'll go find someone that says, oh, you have a, you know, the whatever the buzzword is, oh, you have a yeast infection. And then they treat them for yeast and they damn near die because, you know, it releases the yeast is actually, hold, as you know, it's holding the mercury. Keeping yeah. it. It's a preventative thing. So, so, you know, it's got to be someone knowledgeable like yourself and um, that they know what's going on so they can take care of these people before they come in, because I'm going to get rid of the source and I don't mix my hats too much. I'm. The guy getting rid of the source. I don't pretend to be the um, medical uh, um, healthcare body type practitioner, other than let's use safe materials and safe protocols. Are there any protocols you use as far as supplements or binders when you're removing mercury fillings? I do. I use um, the activated charcoal mm -hmm. at the time that we're doing the procedure. Um, I have uh, some uh, some clinics nearby me that can do some vitamin C and glutathione and things like that. But, you know, honestly, what, what we found through a lab out in California, a guy who's done tons of research on glutathione, it was discounted orally. But the truth is it was just breaking apart when it went across the uh, uh, mucosal membrane and then it would reattach. But they were testing how much glutathione was in the bloodstream and they test within the first hour. And it took longer to go through and recombine. 
and that was the flaw in the testing. So medical doctors are all like, you can't take it orally because it's not effective. Um, you, you know, you have to get it as an IV. IV is expensive and IV only lasts for a half an hour to 45 minutes. It's, it's out of the system. So, so glutathione, I'll help them with glutathione and, um, I'll help them with, um, the activated charcoal on the day that they're in for the procedure on, uh, to kind of build their immune system, maybe glutathione. But again, in my practice, I have several uh, healthcare practitioners that uh, follow different protocols that helps a lot of these people. Yeah, and so do you have any protocol for following, uh, getting the mercury fillings removed, like taking the activated charcoal for a week or something after the procedure? You know, I haven't done that. I mean, I, it seems like it would be fine, but um, that would help if there was anything going on in the gut, I suppose. But typically I did it, I would do it just the day of. So I don't know of any studies necessarily in that one. But, you know, some are using cilantro and um, selenium and different things to detoxify with. I mean, and uh, your different protocols and stuff, I think they're all beneficial because, like, if you're doing objective tests like you're doing, you can actually see the changes, you know, so the objective tests are nice for the patients to see because they can sense they're progressing, but they can also see it and they know sometimes they might, you might see the objective change a little bit premature before they start feeling better, but it's coming, yes. right? Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything you're else welcome. that you want to add to our well, conversation? Well, you know, there's a, sure, there's a couple of things. Is uh, the, the other company that I'm involved in is called Great Oral Health, Inc., and I'm really passionate about it. I started it because I wanted to, well, with biomedic dentistry, we can rebuild teeth, right, and, and prevent root canals and things like that, but we're still catching them late in the game. How do we prevent it? So the other company that I am uh, founded and have several patents in is called Great Oral Health, Inc. And we sell a few different supplements there that I'm passionate about worldwide. I'd like to help people prevent cavities, prevent um, gum disease, really get ultra healthy mouths and not have to go through a lot of this stuff. In, in a sense, it would be nice if we could put ourselves out of business as dentists. We're, we're, we're one of the few professions, I think we're working hard at it, but we still haven't gotten there because the amount of decay worldwide and gum disease worldwide is four billion, over four billion people. So it's a massive uh, pandemic out there. And so what we discovered is there are certain people that never get gum disease, they never get cavities, 2%. And out of that 2%, uh, we were able to isolate what kind of bacteria do they have in their mouth that that's happening. And so one of the products I have is a probiotic for the mouth. It's a chewable, you take it at night, and it, it can convert the harmful bacteria to the good bacteria. And it's fun, we're seeing a lot of cool stories, a lot of cool results and stuff. And of course, what I see in my own practice, but the kids that, are prone to cavities, they're not getting cavities, that they're checkups, all these kind of things, right? And then the wives love it for the husbands and the husbands for the wives because, you know, they have uh, fresher breath, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's a win-win for everybody. But these bacteria that are in there, I have seven strains, they can lower the harmful bacteria in the mouth by up to 80%. There's really good research and studies. And it's on my website, greatoralhealth.com. If anybody is interested in it, um, it's really great products. They're all natural. And that was the goal I had as a holistic dentist. I wanted to create that. And then they can sign up on the newsletter because I have an all natural toothpaste coming out that literally will remineralize teeth on a microscopic level. So if people have sensitive teeth, et cetera, it'll help with all those things and fast within two weeks wow. because of a healing calcium. So, you know, that's a blast for me. And uh, so anybody that's interested in that, that's greatoralhealth.com. And uh, Wendy, just one last thing I wanted to let your audience know. There's another website that they can go to if they want really a tutorial and education on the basics of dentistry and conservative versus aggressive dentistry and the whys and wherefores and things like that. And we get into all those kind of things. There's a free educational seminar uh, online that they can sign up for. It's just uh, freeholisticdentalcourse.com. Fantastic. And I would love them to go there. And Yeah. 
So, thank well, you very much. Well, thank you so much, Dr. O'Malley. I really appreciate all the education that you're trying to put out there to educate people about the regular dentistry versus uh, holistic. I think it's really, really important work uh, because there's so many people that are just ruining their teeth, unfortunately. And right. there's uh, so many amazing alternatives out there that people need to consider and educate themselves before they just say yes to whatever their dentist is is asking them to do. So, right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's shows like yours and, and pioneers like yourself that are out there. You're the mouthpiece for, as dentists, we're there working all the time. So it's great to be on your show. And I hope... Uh, we create a beautiful wave where people go, hey, this is what I want. Come yes, on. They yes. demand it. And then they can they can see me at the, they can just go into the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry and search that. And they can, um, you know, send their dentist there and their dentist can call me. I'm happy to talk with them. And let's go. Let's get it. Let's get people super healthy and no more root canals, you know, so we don't have a gray area in the first place. Yes, no more root canals. Right? Yes. You do with your daughter. Well done. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And everyone, yeah. thanks so much for tuning in today. You can find me, Wendy Myers, on MyersDetox.com. And you can download my free top 10 tips of detox like a pro checklist at Detox for energy.com. Thanks so much for tuning in today and we will talk to you next week.